What's up, Tony? Can you hear me? What's up, buddy? Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. I've got a special guest with me today. I have got uh, Tony Powers. You used to be Pooter Stomper. Yep. Yeah, but I like Tony. You know, Tony Powers is such a cool name anyway. It's like a, a superhero name, like Tony Stark or something. It just fits good together. So I'm going to you to introduce I, you. When Say, I tell people the name, they, they don't ever believe it. They're like, what's your real name? I'm like, I'm serious. It's Tony Powers. They're like, okay. Yeah, that's a really cool name. <laughs> well, tell me about yourself. Introduce yourself for people who may not know you. Um. Well, as you said, Tony Powers, I am a wilderness skills instructor at the Pathfinder School. Um, when I'm not in the woods, I'm driving a truck for a living. Actually, that's where I'm at right now, staying in a very classy comfort inn on a Wednesday night, getting ready to go back to work tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I uh, got five kids that range from 15 to 5, and, wow. yeah, I like to be outside. That's about it. Cool. See, I, I thought you were a truck driver, but I wasn't sure. And I saw your yep. decor, and I was like, either you really decorate nice, or you're at a hotel. I couldn't decide which. I'm, I probably should ask you before we started. But yeah, I, I'd never have anything this fancy, trust me. <laughs> How long have you been doing that, truck driving? Um, 12 years, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got my seat in 2010. So how did you get into the – I know you like the outdoors, but how did you get into the bushcraft and survival and – and then how did you become uh, an instructor, you know, a wilderness instructor? Well, I'd have to start with, as a child, my pretty much, I've always told everybody that I'm from Ermondale, Indiana. The population is 16 and we're all related. And mm -hmm. it's true. The whole town, my great grandpa pretty much, you know, after the war, he come back and bought like, I don't even know how many acres of woods, but pretty much the entire family bought trailers. Okay. And some people would probably not like to admit that, but I don't care. Sure. Um, we all had our own trailer on this piece of property, but there was all these woods. So since I could run, we'd be barefooted in the woods and um, we would walk the creek down to uh, the Wabash River and go fishing oh. and bring fish back. So I've just always been in the woods and... Uh, I just, I thought everybody lived like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't think it was any different than anybody else, but as I got older and, you know, I always loved to fish and always trapped. Um, and then I started working and there was about a five year period from, I don't know, my age 27 to 32 where I didn't do nothing, but just drive a truck and I gained a bunch of weight and, I didn't fish or anything. And I was like, you know what? There was a point where just getting in and out of my truck, I would lose my breath. I was like, man, I got to get back out in the woods. So yeah, I had, I had been talking about, you know, going to the Pathfinder basic class for quite a few years, but always found a reason not to, whether mm -hmm. it was, Oh, you're too out of shape or you, ch or I just chickened out or whatever. And when I started my YouTube channel, I, I, I'm kind of all over the place. So no, you're fine. With no, yeah, you're good. When I started my YouTube channel, I really didn't want to start a YouTube channel. My boys, who were really young at the time, they're like, Dad, we want to start a YouTube channel. And I'm like, well, I think you're a little young for a YouTube channel. And they bugged me and they bugged me. And I said, I'll tell you what, how about we just use my phone? And we go camp in the ugly cabin, which was just some crappy little shed that I built that I put a wood stove in and um i went back and watched some of those videos they, I, were, they I, were good they were very personable like i mean <clears throat> you felt like you were there so that's the that's why i like the early not to interrupt you that's why i like uh, early videos and stuff because um you really get that one-on-one -on -one with the person doing the video yeah i miss doing them i mean the boys now they've kind of grown out of that phase where they want to hang out with dad so I miss it. The cabin still stands. Maybe I'll fix up a couple of things and go back out there. It's just a little eight by 16 shed and, but a lot of cool memories in that thing. Cool. Yeah. But we stayed in there and we recorded it. And I think like the second video got like a million views and I was like, this is kind of cool, you know? So, um, and I, I had always, you know, I say there was a five year period, but I would get out in the woods every once in a while and, I really started 
working on my skills again because when I was really young, um, my grandfather was really into Ron Hood and mm-hmm. Cat Park Forest. So I've got a lot of his old books. And um, that's who I've learned a lot of this from when I was a teenager. But um, just, you know, about five years ago, four or five years ago, I started to get back in the woods every weekend. I would try to learn something new, a new skill, whatever it is. And then I was like, you know what? I'm finally going to just go to the basic class. And I got to thank you, by the way, because your video is like when I watched your video, you you it's very accurate, by the way, to, by the way, to where it's. You, you let us know that it's tough, but it's also a great time. And when I saw your video and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to finally do it. And then Appreciate somehow. It. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, back to fishing. Is that how you got into fly fishing too? Because you used to fish when you were a kid? Actually, no. Fly fishing is something I got into a little bit later. Um, because your fly I would, fishing videos are awesome. I love fly. That's honestly like a lot of people know me, know me as a trapper, you know, but if I had to pick one outdoor activity, if, if God said you can only do one thing, yeah. it would be fly. Oh, that's crazy. All right. Yeah. Cause you're really good at trapping too. The trapping videos and I was going to get into this, but uh, we'll jump ahead because that is to me, that is one of your, um, how do I say this? It's very entertaining. It's your strong suit. And it looks like you're very passionate about it. I mean, the way you present the information is something that I can understand. I've only been trapping a couple of times. I went with my buddy Bob one time and it was uh, like the coldest January we'd ever had. And it snowed and nothing moved. I mean, birds weren't even moving and we didn't <laughs> catch nothing. It was crazy. But anyway, um, I, I'm not good at it. I'm not proficient at it, but I've been a couple of times. But I love watching your videos because you explain it. Uh, so well and just uh it's it's just easy to understand you know a lot of these guys that their trapping videos just don't uh, they're just too complicated or you have to buy the, the latest greatest or you know it, i don't know i just get lost in them but yours uh, i can really understand well i think it's just it comes down to you know i have always tried to keep everything simple you know the acronym keep it simple stupid i tried not include anything that's unnecessary even even when i'm teaching at the school you know it's just everything you need nothing you don't you can figure out all the minor details on your own i just need to get you doing this task and, and you understand this task yeah. and you can perform that task and I, and honestly when i'm making those trapping videos and, and you know you've talked to cameras before it's awkward yeah it's awkward talking to a camera by yourself basically i just pretend like the camera is one of my buddies so when yeah. i'm teaching people how to do a dirt hole set. I'm just imagining one of my buddies is out there and I talk to him like I would talk to him, you know, just a good old boy from Indiana. And a lot of people can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. I enjoy him. Yeah. Like I said, even though I'm not a trapper, I'll sit down and I'll get in the rabbit hole. I'll start watching either TikTok, which you do really well on TikTok and, uh, or YouTube. And I'll start di- and digging in. You like TikTok better? Well, you know, I used to make fun of TikTok, you yeah. know, cause I <laughs> understand. And uh, I decided to just give it a try. And then, like, the videos do very well on there. So I do like TikTok. It doesn't really – I don't really do anything for money anyways, but it doesn't pay as well as YouTube. But I've kind of had to really gear all of my content towards TikTok because with driving and with teaching, I really don't have time to make, you know, really in-depth videos like I used to or like I I want to. So – I TikTok's perfect because I can just go out, shoot a real quick tip or whatever, put it up there and it does very well normally. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the same thing Jake's been doing too. He likes TikTok over the years. Yeah, kind of in the same boat where he's like, I ain't doing TikTok. And I'm like, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. You may not get rich doing TikTok, but you get a lot of exposure. And yeah. when he did it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I like this. Yep. <laughs> yep. You got any advice on uh, trapping for new uh, newbies for someone just kind of getting into it? I'd say start small, start cheap. You don't need, you know, I use Minnesota brand 450 and 550 traps. They're very expensive, but they're worth it. I would, you know, tell people just start small, you know, buy just a half a dozen traps, set them out. Um, another piece of advice that I would give is to represent the sport well. 
because there's a lot of people that that don't understand trapping and they think it's barbaric and cruel and it's really not when you do it correctly so and it, and it even comes down to social media whatever you post careful about that you want to represent the sport in a positive way i would say make sure you know i've seen videos on youtube of people taunting animals and shooting them from far away and it's like come on this is why everybody hates this yeah you know um and And i I think you go out of your way to um dispel that too though i mean you know i'm not trying to blow smoke up your hind end but you really your videos you're always real careful on how you talk about trapping and letting it go and look the paw's not hurt you know and showing the traps with your fingers and i mean i I think you do a great job with that too sorry didn't mean to Uh, oh interrupt any time i just think you know when people think of trapping they think of the fox and the hound with those really sharp teeth it's not Mm -hmm. like that you know Back in the day, yeah, there were no regulations and there were no rules. Today, it's highly regulated. And, you know, if you're responsible and you follow the rules and you check your traps as often as possible, it's really not, it it really doesn't hurt the animal at all. You know, I I come up on traps before and the fox or the coyote was just sleeping on the ground. You know, they're pretty much like handcuffs. Yeah, they put a little pressure, but they don't they don't make it to where they're they they lose blood supply to their paw and everything like you know things do happen sometimes a really small animal gets in a trap that's intended for a coyote and it you know can sometimes tear tear them up but i mean those are things that just happen yeah i'm not going to sit here and say that you know trapping is 100 percent right you know soft for animals it's not things happen but if you do things the right way Follow the rules. Use the right traps for what you're trying to catch. Um, we can keep it going. The main issue with trapping nowadays is no young people are getting into it. I'm 35, and I'm considered young in the world of trapping. And as time goes on, and it, there's 10 states now, if I remember right, that trapping is illegal. And every state introduces legislation every year to try to ban it. So the longer it goes on, all those older fellas that are going to retire and, and pass away and no new young people to yeah. take over and fight for the sport, it's going to go away. So represent it well, start small. And the most important thing I'd say is to be ready to work work really hard. Trapping is not easy. So tell me about your time at Pathfinder. Um, I finally took the basic class in March of 2020, that's kind of when the world started to shut down. And um, I only wanted to just do the basic class. I never had any intention intentions of coming back, but Dave's like, you should come back for the intermediate. And I did. And then he's like, okay, then you should come back for the advanced. And then uh, I, it's, it's really happened so fast. I really couldn't tell you how I got where I'm at, but I just one day I, asked to be a helper and then he said you're an associate instructor and then here I am it's been wow wow it's been almost three years since I took my basic class it's time flies when you're having fun yeah yeah and I I can tell you really enjoy it I mean all this I mean I know this do you ever think this will be your bread and butter or you think you'll continue to have to drive trucks um I hope one day okay I hope, you know, I, here's my problem and people that know me personally will tell you this is I'm not much of a planner. I'm a by the seat of your pants, wing it, let's yeah. do this. So, you know, I don't have a whole lot of goals. I would love to, you know, be that, you know, and just teach this full time. But um, there's nothing wrong with being a truck driver. Either, no, so. no, absolutely not. We actually, we need more people like you. They need more we need more. I'm, a, I'm an electrician by my story's pretty long too, but I was an electrician with railroad and I got laid off is when I started my own business. So, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of skilled workers out there, tradespeople. I mean, they're, they're dying. People, they're cut, these industries are dying for welders and, and uh, just blue collar workers. Everybody's gone to college and which is fine too. I mean, you know, but nobody's yeah. doing the, the blue collar stuff so yeah we definitely need more truck drivers absolutely 
tell me why you think, I mean, we talked on this a little bit that um, bushcraft, I mean, bushcraft and survival. When I was a kid, I did the same thing. I ran the woods. Um, you know, we had, we didn't have a holler to ourselves. I wish we would have, but I lived out in the county and, you know, I get home from school, I'd hit the woods and I wouldn't come home till it was dark or mom went on the back porch and rang the bell. She had a bell, bell, school bell. If I heard the bell, yeah, I better come in. But, and then the weekends, man, me and my buddies, we'd pack up a little, uh, I guess, backpack or rucksack, you know, with a sandwich and, and water or whatever, canteen of the old metal or plastic canteen, both of them are nasty. And they go out in the woods all day. I mean, just all day. And yep. the kids nowadays, man, they don't have a clue. So I had a weird conversation with my daughter. I didn't mean to cut you off, but okay. she, I remember telling her not too long ago, I'm like, man, the 90s were awesome. And she's like, what do you mean? How How is it awesome? And I said, I just want you to imagine your life right now, but the internet does not exist. And she's like, how is that awesome? I'm just like, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, tell me about why you think bushcraft and survival is so important, especially to, um, well, to, to men in general, you know, to any, in, men in their 50s, to, to young men in their you know, 16 or 17 years old. Well, you know, besides the obvious reasons that we just talked about, I'd say one of my favorite things about bushcraft and survival is, and, and some people call themselves survival experts or whatnot. I don't believe that exists, not in the survival world, because what's great about bushcraft and survival is you can spend your whole life practicing it or whatever you want to call it and still not learn everything. You know what I mean? You can get, get pretty dang good at all of it, but you're can always learn more. So that's one thing. You'll never get bored of it if you look at it more as like a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's also great because survival and bushcraft kind of complement each other. You know, they're, they're two separate things, but they work together. So that I think it's important to, you know, look at it from both angles. Um, bushcraft is, is a lot of fun, too. I mean, just taking, you know, an axe, a knife and a saw and you know, depending on your resources, creating yeah. whatever it is you can imagine. I mean, it goes back to you can never stop learning. So, yeah, I just it's awesome, you know, not only for something to do to keep you active, no matter what your age is, you know, um, but it's also very practical, especially if we keep going the way we're going, like you said. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, listen, man, I won't keep you any longer. I really appreciate your time. It's been I could talk for hours, but, I, you know, <laughs> anybody who knows me personally knows that I can do that as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, time is running out. You just told me 10 minutes. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, I really appreciate your time, man. I appreciate you um, sharing stuff with us. And, uh, you know, it's always great seeing you and talking to you. I'm glad we finally got to meet at the gathering. That was that was really cool. I enjoyed, you know. Yeah. Well, I hope to see you again soon, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Hope to see you again soon. Take care of yourself, and uh, we'll see you, if not on the internet, but we'll see you at, uh, at some of the gatherings. All right, buddy.